The Unison Spa Resort in Hakone offers its guests the pretty unique experience of splashing around in a vat of pork soup and ramen noodles. While this may sound crazy to many people, many? The Japanese believe that soaking in such a bath is good for the skin. Because a broth made of pork is rich in collagen. Chili pepper, wasabi, sweet potato, grilled corn, soybean, salt, watermelon, mango, green tea, and that's only a short list of the Kit Kat flavors you can try in Japan. Which one would you try? Let me know down in the comments. Specialists make this kind of food from plastic or wax, and it looks just as delicious as the real one. Many restaurants use fake food to display their popular dishes in the windows and attract hungry clients. Usually, these replicas cost much more than the dishes they imitate. Back in the 40s, scientists brought a number of rabbits to Okonoshima Island to do some tests. However, later on, the animals were freed and started to multiply. Now the island is full of them and attracts a lot of tourists. Taking photos in a booth is nothing new, but Japan added its own exciting twist to this experience. Their photo booths, called Purakura, allow you to edit photos right on the spot, adding different backgrounds, funny stickers, or writings. Also, you can send the pictures to your cell phone. Or perhaps your toilet, if, you know, you have Wi-Fi in there. You might never have to leave. Subways and train stations get really overcrowded during rush hour. That's why the station staff and part-time workers have to perform the routine procedure of pushing people inside trains to fit in as many passengers as possible before the doors close. Before going inside a building, you can park and lock your umbrella just like you do with your bike. Now you can be sure no one will take it, and you won't make a puddle on the floor if your umbrella is wet. Many government buildings, offices, and hotels have this sort of umbrella rack. Every single time I eat sushi, rice falls off the pieces of fish as soon as I pick them up with my chopsticks. Now in Japan, though, people don't have this problem. They mix the rice with a special sauce that consists of salt, sugar, and rice vinegar. This sauce keeps the rice together and allows you to bring sushi up to your mouth in one piece. Sign me up! A holiday meal means tons of tasty food and, of course, a big roast turkey. But if you ever celebrate the holidays while in Japan, don't be surprised to be treated with KFC instead of more traditional food. The thing is that, in this country, eating food from KFC for the holidays is a widely practiced tradition. In the Ginza district of Tokyo, there's an unusual stationery store which rises 12 floors. The store sells high-quality stationery, and each of its levels has a different concept. For example, on the second floor, you'll find the share space, where there are things necessary for sending your thoughts to other people, like envelopes, letter paper, and postcards. You can write a letter right then and there, and send it immediately from where you are. And on the fourth floor, in the meeting space, you can create an original notebook with the cover and paper of your choice and your name engraved on it. It's a common thing in Japan to see people handing out free tissues on the street. What's the catch? It's simple. Companies put their advertisements on or inside tissue packages, and people who take them learn about their services or products. It must be working, since more than 4 billion free tissue packages get distributed in Japan every year. That's a lot of runny noses. Suffering from the cold in the winter? How about some tissues for that runny nose? No wait, that was number 14. Just get yourself one of these one-use pocket heaters that are so popular in Japan. It's called Cairo, and nowadays, you just need to open it for the chemical reaction to begin. Besides warming your hands, you can also stick these warmers inside your clothes. What a gem of an idea for a freezing winter! Japan is a traditionalist society. So men are commonly breadwinners and seen as heirs to their families. That's why an unusual thing has happened. There are more adults adopted there than children. Most often the adopted are men aged 20 to 30 years. 
This is done to have an heir, or for instance, to pass down a business. Remember I told you about their diligence? Well, it concerns every sphere of life, including public transport. Japanese trains are almost never late, and if they are, they must issue official delay certificates for passengers. This way, they have proof they weren't late because of their own tardiness. Politeness is one of Japan's trademarks known all over the world. There are numerous formalities to be observed in communication with different people, and they're all rather strict. They also have about 20 ways to say sorry. Now let that sink in. What is considered polite in Japan may sometimes surprise foreigners, though. For example, slurping your noodles with gusto is a way to show your appreciation to the cook. So don't restrain yourself. <sighs> Avoid walking down the street with your food, however. It's not exactly rude today, but it's still not very classy. Don't be surprised when you see the Japanese standing right at the spot where they bought some treat and eating it. They just don't want to walk with it. It's also considered impolite to talk on your phone in a confined public space, such as public transport. Great idea! Shall I repeat that one? <laughs> there, you're expected to put your phone in your bag or pocket, turn off the sound, and only answer it if it's urgent. And even then, you should keep your voice down. You don't want dirty looks from the locals, do you? Well, you'll probably find it next to impossible to talk on the phone on a subway train in Japan anyways. This is especially true for Tokyo, where there are special people called pushers on many stations. They do exactly what their name implies – pushing people into the train cars. Try pulling out your phone when you're pinned to the wall. Back to work issues. If you ever find yourself in a Japanese restaurant, don't even think about tipping your waiter. It's considered rude, and the reason is simple. They do their job and they do it well because it's an honor. If you give them a tip, you offend them by assuming they do it for extra cash. You sporting tattoos? Then Japanese public baths are off-limits for you, sorry. Tattoos are considered ugly and associated with Yakuza or organized Japanese criminal gangs, so no one will allow you entry to a public bath without them at least covered. Recently, though, this has changed in many baths, because Japan is trying to be more open to tourists. Nothing says cheap and probably unhealthy like food from a vending machine. Sure, you might find some roasted peanuts mixed in with the beef jerky and potato chips, but vending machines don't exactly say balanced diet in flashing neon lights. And yes, I know not all vending machines are created equal. Sure, you'll find wrapped sandwiches and slices of cake in some of the higher-end models, but those aren't really what vending machines are for. Unless you're in Japan, where vending machines are the dominant species. There are more than 5 million in a country with a population of less than 127 million. That's about one for every 25 people on the island. Why is this? Does Japan really like Doritos? Well, plenty of Japanese vending machines sell traditional snack foods. The sky's the limit as far as automated sales are concerned. This includes neat but relatively reasonable things such as fresh fruit and hot coffee, as well as oddities such as clothing, shoes, umbrellas, surgical masks, and even cassette tapes. Yes, cassette tapes. Put a pin in that because we're coming back to it later. While some of these seem strange, they make sense in context. How many times have you left the house without an umbrella only to get soaked on the way back? As for the surgical masks, nothing spreads germs like being crammed into an underground metal tube, and big cities like Tokyo and Osaka have a lot of underground metal tubes. And let's not forget the gimmick vending machines, such as the pet store in Tokyo, which featured a puppy vending machine. Presumably, the sneaker machine falls into the same category, unless Tokyo has a rampant shoe theft problem. Anyway, remember when we put a pin in the cassette tapes? Japan is home to some of the largest tech companies and car manufacturers in the world, famous across the globe for their efficient and forward-thinking designs. With that in mind, it might come as a shock that the land of Sony and Toyota is using technology the rest of us left behind in the 90s. So why are fax machines and cassette tapes all the rage in the land of the rising sun? A lot of it has to do with a quirk of the Japanese economy. While most of the Japanese companies you've heard of are sprawling multinationals with multi-billion dollar incomes, 
huge corporations actually represent a tiny fraction of the local market. With small and medium-sized businesses dominating Japan's economy, most workplaces don't have the resources to update their technology regularly. This continued demand has kept cassettes and fax machines on the market long after the rest of the world left them behind. As a result, many consumers continue to rely on them as cheaper alternatives to modern technology. A hundred years ago, Japan was a traditional agricultural country. Nothing like how we know it now. No robots. Mm -mm. How did it manage to become the most technology-savvy country with a developed economy and one of the highest living standards? Well, one of the reasons is the high financial competence of the Japanese themselves. They're experts in personal finance. They use kakebo, which means they don't buy that third handbag in two months and manage to save up to 35% of their income. Sound good? Then be ready to take notes. Kakebo translates to household account book. It's a notebook where you write down your income and expenses. Long before any financial apps or digital tables appeared, the Japanese had this system of writing up a budget. And it keeps working today. The idea of this saving tool is to track how much you earned and spent in detail. Its final goal is to increase your savings. Look simple? <laughs> it is. No apps, no technology, no tricky calculations. That's the point. You rule out everything that's not necessary and focus on your habits and decisions. This is how Fumiko Chiba, the author of the book Kakebo, The Japanese Art of Budgeting Saving Money, explains the efficiency of the method. Kakebo appeared in 1904 and grew popular thanks to the first woman journalist in Japan, Hani Motoko, who sold it to a wide audience. Chiba says that even though Japan is still a traditional country in many ways, Kakebo gave women freedom and control over financial decisions. Dozens of books, magazines, and articles devoted to Kakebo are published in the country every year. Kakebo fans know that reasonable budgeting helps you save money. Instead of thinking about things that you can't afford, you switch your attention to what's important and what you can spend your money on. Kakebo is based on four main questions. 1. How much money do you have? 2. How much would you like to save? 3. How much do you spend? 4. How can you make things better? To draw up a Kakebo-style budget, you'll need two notebooks, a big one and a small one. You can buy special Kakebo journals, but any kind will work. You use the big one to write down your income and plan expenses and savings. As for the small one, you'll be carrying it around with you to record all the expenses in real time, so you don't forget a single cent. Toilets in Japan, like their gadgets, are technologically advanced and user-friendly. Even the simpler ones still have built-in sinks on the tank and heated seats. Some public restrooms use a system that shows you which stalls are vacant or occupied. And the most high-tech super toilets are like a Swiss army knife, with all kinds of buttons that raise or lower the seat, play some white noise background music, and, of course, send a spray of water to clean the user up. Oh, and they've been using these things for over 35 years. So, yeah. Each year, the Japanese village of Inkadate transforms rice paddy fields into large-scale works of art. Known as Tanbo art, this tradition started in 1993 with the purpose of reviving the region's dwindling economy. It became and remains a huge success, with hundreds of thousands of spectators visiting the place to personally witness these incredible masterpieces. They have a different theme each year, like Japanese folklore, anime, and iconic figures from movies, all made in exquisite detail using 10 colorful strains of rice plant varieties. The Japanese love everything that's cute, or kawaii as they call it, like cats and anime characters with their large, adorable eyes. As for their pooches, the latest craze in Japan is to groom their dogs into perfectly trimmed cubes. It isn't just in Japan, but it's neighboring countries as well. In Japan, they take cultivating melons pretty seriously. You won't only see pricey cube-shaped watermelons, but also ones in a heart and pyramid shape. There are even human-faced watermelons complete with eyes, a nose, and a mouth. As for one of Japan's most iconic characters, Hello Kitty even has her face on a melon. To top it off, 
These Hello Kitty branded melons are priced at $69. High-speed trains in Japan are designed like, well, a bullet, hence the name. These things can go up to 198 miles per hour and are known for their punctuality, comfort, safety, and efficiency. They have six types of bullet trains, but one must have stood out to this shoe designer. These sneakers are made to look like the Tohoku Shinkansen train. I wonder if they make you run faster. It's obvious by now that Japan can deliver. But even when you go into a restaurant or cafe, what you see in those beautiful advertisements is exactly what you get. Just look at this Starbucks matcha s'more frappuccino compared to the display nearby. In Japan, they consider food preparation an art. A classic example is the glass display that showcases a restaurant's dishes. In Japan, when you order food, it's the same as what's advertised. Do not leave tips. It's very convenient. But if you don't know about this rule, you can end up in an embarrassing situation. On one of my first days in Japan, I had an amazing meal in a restaurant. The food, service, atmosphere, everything was perfect. So before leaving, I put a generous tip on the table. Well, my waiter stopped me before I got out the door to return my forgotten money. When I'm at home in the US, I'm not the only one having my lunch on the run, hopping on the bus with a Coke in one hand and a hot dog in the other. In most places in Japan, though, eating and drinking on the street or in public transport is frowned upon, unless it's a Shinkansen or similar long-distance train. You just don't take a sandwich or coffee for a walk to the nearest park. It's much more common to have a meal in the same place where you bought your food. And, if it's street food, eat it while standing still or find somewhere to sit down. But this rule could already be outdated. I've seen quite a lot of locals scarfing snacks while hurrying somewhere. If you ask a Japanese person for directions, they won't point, it's considered threatening and therefore impolite. Instead, they'll either provide you with verbal directions or show where you should go with an open hand. Now, about greeting people. I'm sure you know that shaking hands is nothing but bad manners in Japan. Well, if you're a foreigner, no one will scold you. Japanese people are used to shaking hands with Westerners. But if you want to blend in, you should bow when meeting people, thanking someone, or apologizing. Oh, and try to avoid my two most embarrassing mistakes. Never attempt to shake someone's hand and bow at the same time. It's awkward. And do not bow back when you're a customer, for example, in hotels, restaurants, or stores. Oh, that reminds me! In many stores, you can notice small trays near the cash register. You're supposed to put the money there instead of handing it directly to the cashier. Ignoring such a tray will be rather impolite. Oh, and don't count the change you've just been handed. It's very, very rude. When you climb into a hot, relaxing bath in Japan, you must already be clean. In this country, bathing isn't about washing your body, it's a relaxing activity. That's why you should clean yourself in the shower before getting into a bathtub. Mm. And make sure that no soap residue gets into the water. If there is traditional Japanese flooring in a restaurant, you should remove your shoes before entering. And if you need to go to the restroom, you'll find several pairs of bathroom slippers of different sizes near the entrance. The crucial thing is to remember to take these slippers off after you finish your business. Returning from the restroom with bathroom slippers on is an unthinkable mistake. <laughs> Guess what happened to me once or twice? Right, 